Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. I'm Tom Worth Jr. A uh, couple quick hits tonight on the legal front, um, in the tariff front, just reminding us all what so many of us voted for uh, this last November 5th, the overwhelming mandate for Trump. You know, his almost 50% of everyone that voted. Uh, the people have spoken and what they have called for is what he is delivering um his uh his nominee for treasury was saying he's a free trader at heart and he's probably not gonna go through with some of these things just using them just as negotiating ploys but today trump did say that yes there will be uh kind of day one tariffs enacted uh against china they're going up and against Mexico and Canada, noted noted enemies, Canada and Mexico. Um, recall that in 2020, he renegotiated NAFTA, and by renegotiate, I mean just renamed it uh, to the U.S.-Mexico-Canada agreement, I believe it was, and I don't think anything really changed. Um, and this would be illegal. <laughs> what he, he negotiated, or negotiated that himself, uh, in 2020, and and now he's saying he's going to enact tariffs on Mexico and Canada that aren't there now, which would uh, trade trade people who are looking at this say it appears to be illegal. So I'm not sure what kind of uh, bargaining power you have when you are threatening to do illegal things and you are the United States, but it doesn't really stop him in his life. As we see, uh, case in point, Jack Smith dropping uh, the case as we knew he would, ask, or asking for its dismissal. And uh, this is for uh, the documents case. This is, re remember Eileen Cannon, the federal judge he appointed right before he left office in 2020. She single-handedly blocked it. She just didn't rule on things. She took way too long. When she did, uh, she would, entertain wild, wild uh, defense theories and suggestions and things that nobody would ever <laughs> consider or contemplate. She would just say, hmm, you know, that's a good idea. I hadn't really thought of that before. I don't know if anyone's ever really brought this up before. Well, yeah, there's a reason no one had ever really brought it up before. And so the intent was just to make the case take as long as it could and never go to trial until uh, the election. And he would roll the dice because he had a pretty good chance uh, when all this was being delayed. Uh, because Biden, you know, we had the inflation starting in mid-2022, and that would probably kill uh, the hopes of any president to be reelected. Um, and it it just, I mean, it, it looked for, for a you know, a good chunk of this time, uh, certainly all of 2024, that Trump would have a better than 50-50 chance of getting reelected. And and all they needed to do was delay the case until it got close to the election, until after the election. That's what happened. And Jack Smith just said, you know what, we can't, it's a long-standing DOJ policy. You can't prosecute a sitting president. It's just, it's very, very cut and dry, very black and white. You just can't do it. So we're not going to do it. Um, they did leave the door open to uh, bring it back up after he leaves office again. That's why he was being tried or supposed to be being tried now because he was no longer in office. Um, so still hope that that could happen if statute of limitations hasn't expired four years from now. Um, or if he is deemed competent to stand trial by then, that would be another legal defense, I would imagine. I, I didn't see anything about that, but just common sense. He's probably not going to be all there four years from now, or five years or six years from now, whenever Cannon lets the trial go forward. Um, so yeah, uh, breaking the law has never stopped him. So. I would like to see China held to account. And China, unlike when Trump started the trade war with them, or trade wars, I would say, back during his first term, China is actually in a tough spot right now. And they have been ever since COVID. And 
they they just, they just got a, a lot that they're dealing with as a country as an economy um and so he actually does have stronger bargaining power right now as did biden so he could probably try the same strong arm tactics again and maybe have more success than he did last time but remember biden has had some tariffs on china already so you're just you're just going to take them to a ridiculous level and and, and i don't know what that's really getting you um the the reasoning he is offering is because china is not stopping fentanyl from coming into our country or the ingredients for it and same with mexico and canada they're not stopping fentanyl from coming into our country uh, as if any country has the power to stop drugs being smuggled across their borders um th this is i don't really know what he's after he, he you're not stopping the illicit drug trade in the world uh by threatening tariffs so i don't know what he's really trying to get but uh i guess we'll find out um uh, the, these were the entertaining headlines of the day that caught my attention today. Uh, Wall Street did get their wish with uh, Treasury Secretary, um, the guy that Trump wants to do, and, and it's not the guy Musk wanted, so that's great. Um, I think I mentioned that uh, yesterday as well. I, I, I just kind of think that's pretty cool. Um, those guys should, you know, they're they yes they backed trump you know i heard i heard a uh, a podcast on the economist and it was talking about dallas and it was from last week i believe and how dallas is just kind of conservative business nirvana uh, a lot of companies were coming in from california and this has been going on for years and years now um some of them went down to austin to because that was kind of more like california just just political wise um business wise than uh, than dallas was but dallas is just dallas is just straight up business it always has been it's always been attractive for businesses and business business leaders ceos a lot of them wanted trump um because they don't think he's going to do what he says he's going to do they they purely want less regulation less taxes and less regulation. And that's all they're supporting him for. Um, they're, they're calling his bluff, just en masse, corporate CEOs are. And, and I hope they're right. Um, none, of them, none of us believe they are right, but they, I mean, money is all that matters to these people, um, that, that their businesses go unregulated, that they, they can be as anti-competitive as they want, they can arm the environment as much as they want be as discriminatory as they want, um, exploitative as they want. They just want to be left alone. Um, the reason we have regulations in place is because that's how businesses have always wanted to be. And, and we eventually developed and enforced regulations to prevent that from happening. But, but business leaders still want that. They want to be left alone to do their own thing. It's not for our benefit, it is for their benefit. And uh, it was kind of a, I don't know, kind of a rudimentary look at Dallas, I think, uh, stereotypes and, and whatnot. But, but they did talk to some people and quite a few people, I think, for that podcast. And that seemed to be the consensus is we don't think he's going to do all this stuff that he said he's going to do. We think he just said it to get elected. He's not going through with all that. Well, he's going through with the tariffs. <laughs> Um, and he's going through with uh, not being prosecuted anymore for, for crimes he's committed. So I don't know exactly at what point they will think he's bluffing. Because so far, ever since the election with his cabinet appointments, uh, and with his pot, with his day one policies he talked about today, um, that this he's doing everything he promised he would do. And uh, kudos to him, I guess, because politicians are notorious for breaking their promises, for just saying whatever they need to do, to whatever they need to say to get elected. And in his case, everybody is hoping and praying uh, that he isn't going to do exactly what he promised to do. But the, like the worst 
the worse the idea is, the worse the action is, the more likely he is to do it. And a lot of his, uh, his just nutty supporters are all for it. So I don't know. It's just, this is a topsy-turvy world. And it's, it's always a lot to talk about. Um, also the potential the spinoff of MSNBC from Comcast. Um, ratings still continue to get hammered. Restructure uh, personnel there, some on-air personnel. Uh, I, I guess these were in some internal documents. I didn't see anything official yet. Um, I think that's short-sighted. Uh, even I knew, starting my little YouTube channel back in August, that they're, like, I never expected to make any money off of this. Maybe I'll make a video about um, how little money I've made off of this. But I did expect if there was any money to be made, if I ever got enough uh, views and subscribers to get monetized, and that happened pretty fast. It happened in uh, about three weeks. Um, that whatever money would show up would just be temporary. It was over a billion dollars spent on, on this political cycle. And a lot of that was crammed into kind of right after I started my channel. And, and then I knew that money would dry up. And it has. Um, the dollars per thousand views has actually gone up since the, the probably, I don't know, four to seven days after the election. But the ads have changed. My wife told me she's seeing more aesthetics ads, not political ads. And, and my theory behind that is that uh, the Trump and Harris campaigns, mostly the Trump campaigns, were just bidding the highest and getting all the ad space. But the people wouldn't actually really watch very many of those ads or click on those ads. But those slots were still taken by those political campaigns bidding so high. And now uh, they're not there. They're out of the game. And so you have normal, I forget some, I forget what brand she said, uh, some cosmetic or beauty brand or something. Um, so it wouldn't have bid as much for the slot, but people are more likely to watch the ad or, or to click on the ad uh, if they want more information. So that click revenue and that watch revenue uh, more often is going to me even though the dollars per uh per you know video or whatever aren't there so it couldn't have come as a surprise to comcast or to N msnbc also cnn like they knew <laughs> they they should have known that that money was going to dry up and it wasn't there you know six months ago or four months ago maybe it was six months ago um so i can't see that that would be the sole reason why they rejigger their whole network lineup on air personalities. Um, but that's the theory by uh, people who are writing about this right now. So, so we'll see how all that shakes out. Um, uh, these people do, and supposedly Fox News isn't really affected by this. Um, I don't know. I, I find that interesting. Also, it, because that determines, that determines everything. Fox News determined the outcome of this election. And uh, so what they do matters. And what MSNBC and CNN uh, and CBS News, what they do matters too, because they have to do a better job of, of not focusing solely on certain things and focusing on a lot of things, bringing a lot of information to a lot of different voters. It's a big tent with the Democratic Party. It's, a, it's not a big tent with the Trump party. So you can have one network deliver the message, but on the Democratic side, there's just, it's a very diverse group. And so you just have to talk to a lot of different, a lot of different people with a lot of different messaging. And, and this does matter. Um, Trump ran for four years and I don't know who the Democratic candidate is going to be, but when Trump started fighting the election results, the, the night of the election, proclaiming he won that night, um, he was already running his re-election campaign. So it was four, four full years. We have no clue who's going to be the Democratic candidate four years from now. Is it going to be Kamala Harris? Or maybe they go, maybe they get scared. They don't want to go 0 and 3 with a woman presidential candidate. Or maybe they feel like, she actually is a very strong candidate and with enough time to craft a winning message, uh, 
that she could be their best bet. She's kind of been through it now. Uh, maybe she's more seasoned. Uh, maybe she can go back and look at at what her weak links were or weaknesses were, but she didn't lose by much. So I, I don't think, like, just like with him, kind of our worst nightmare when he lost, he lost by like 7 million votes. That was a lot of votes. But still, when he, when it became very clear right off the bat that he, it was still going to be him, that he wasn't just going away like every other loser does, it, like all of us are going, gosh, <laughs> what if he wins? What if somehow people forget about these four years? And what if he can somehow stay out of jail? And what if he can win? Well, Kamala Harris has a much better chance, I think, of of uh, pulling something like that off than he would have this time around because she didn't lose by that many votes. And uh, I don't know, I'm not saying she should be the candidate, but I am saying that it's not a given that she, that it should be someone else. Um, it's just, like they, I don't know, they got a lot to figure out. So uh, a lot going on. Uh, it's going to be an interesting four years and uh, interesting week here, uh, Thanksgiving week. So uh that's it for tonight uh and hope you guys are are staying safe it's getting a little chilly here in dallas uh the light sweater today at work didn't really cut it on my walk so um maybe i'll have to do better tomorrow and we'll talk later